Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for an update on being toilet paper free for a year and a half now. So I've actually switched to cloth wipes many years ago, but at the time when I first started, I was only using them for the smaller jobs and not the bigger jobs. I was for some reason still hesitant at getting into using them that way until about a year and a half ago, immediately after I shot a video about cloth wipes and what to do when the toilet paper is all gone. And so once I made the complete change to just cloth, I had wished I had went ahead and made the full change many years ago because it's just so much better. It works better. It's cleaner. It's far easier cleanup than I ever thought, which is funny because I did cloth diapers with both of my boys many, many years ago and didn't have any issue with it. So why would switching to cloth in this case be so difficult? But since making that complete change, it has been so liberating. Now we always have a good supply of toilet paper on hand. We always have and so far I'm the only one in the house that has completely made the change over to cloth wipes but that's okay well that and my grandson Jackson from the first day I started watching him until now I'm just using cloth wipes on him now mom always sends the disposable wipes I still use these and I did a video just on them now there's obviously other methods that people can choose to go with if you're trying to get away from being dependent on a product that might not be there for you in the future. A lot of people swear by bidets and they love them. So that's one option. You don't have to go the very expensive route of buying the whole setup. You can do something simple as buying an attachment that goes on your toilet or even just getting a squirt bottle that you use by hand. A lot of people are swearing by this and they, they love the way it works for them. Now, personally, that was just not the choice for me because I know I'm gonna have to dry off anyway I figure why not just use the cloth water cleans better than dry paper or dry cloth so what I do when I'm using it for the bigger jobs these are the ones I keep in the main bathroom these are the ones I keep in the back bathroom and also on the changing table for my grandson so what I do is I simply grab one, I have a, a spray bottle nearby, and what I like to do is I actually make my own colloidal silver, so I put that in there. So not only will it disinfect and help clean better, it'll also help keep any possible odors down. And so I just spray that on there and I use that, and usually one is enough. Sometimes I'll use two if I really need to, no big deal, because they're all gonna go in a single load all together. Now, um, you could just use plain water. I just really like using the colloidal silver, and since we make our own for really cheap, I always have plenty on hand. But I do the same thing for our grandson. I use the colloidal silver spray. In fact, this is the spray bottle I keep in here because this is where I keep the changing table. And I just spray that on there and use that, and that's all I have to do. And then when it comes time to wash them, I just do one load with all the wipes all together, and I don't wash them with anything else. Now, some people will choose to do pre-soak. If you're washing by hand, I recommend doing a pre-soak. But you don't have to soak them the whole time you're letting it fill up. Just put them in a bucket, let them soak, rinse it out, and then go ahead and start washing them by hand or using a setup like what we have which wouldn't necessarily require you to have to actually get your hands in the water if you don't want to is just get yourself a, a an agitator you can buy brand new ones that are have a plastic end looks a lot like a plunger what i did when we were getting our off-grid laundry system set up is i found on ebay i found an old-fashioned one which is a very vintage one it's heavy duty i love this thing so i went for about six weeks where I had to depend on my off-grid laundry setup because I needed a new washing machine, but it took six weeks for us to get it and our other one had finally bit the dust. What I did in that case is that would be the last thing I would throw into the water and then wash it like that. That might not be desirable depending on how dirty the items before that were, but if you're doing a good rinse, adding colloidal silver to it, especially to the rinse water, when you go to rinse them out, you can really disinfect them 
especially if you're going to hang them in the sun. And then if you're using an electric washing machine, like which is mostly what I do because we can run it on our solar power most of the year anyway, I throw all the wipes from all areas in here, in both bathrooms, into the laundry together. I usually have to do a load about every three to four days. I select the longest cycle to wash on. And cold is gonna be preferable because hot water can set in stains or you can use warm. I actually, this is the one time I will actually use warm. Most of the time everything gets washed in cold, but I do a warm wash and then a cold rinse. Whether it be in my off-grid setup or my electric setup is I use the my homemade laundry powder now this is different than my old recipe this is my newest recipe it's better it's safer for your electric washing machines because it doesn't have any soap in it it is easier to make and it's very inexpensive to make and it's very effective in fact this has a multi-purpose use it's actually the best scouring powder i've ever had i've ever used over anything i bought and certainly better than any i've tried to make before so what i'm going to do is link to the recipe to this in the description box down below i recommend you watch the whole video so you can understand why i got away from using soap at all whether it be fells naphtha or my own homemade bar soap in my laundry powder so and plus just giving it you making it multi-purpose was another great reason as well as making it easier so i'll link to that so i just add when I'm doing that, I'll add probably about two tablespoons of that because I, I usually like to go a little heavier on the cleaning powder in the when I'm washing these things than I would do for if I had the same size load. Usually for the laundry powder, I'm going to use one to two tablespoons anyway, but I'm usually doing bigger loads than what I do when I'm washing the cloth wipes. And a lot of times I will also add maybe about a quarter cup of vinegar, homemade vinegar, to that laundry cycle. But I've done it without the vinegar and I actually notice no difference. And I think the reason for that is because I've already got colloidal silver on each and every wipe that I use. And colloidal silver is excellent at cleaning as well as disinfecting. So with that, plus the laundry powder, these come out clean and fresh. I don't need to do a pre-soak, though, you know, that again, that is an option for you if you'd like to do that. And then if it's a nice enough day with no rain and we don't have a fire going in the house, then I hang them outside to dry. The sun has a lot of disinfecting and deodorizing power on its own anyway, so that can add even more to that. But even when I dry inside, hang inside the house to dry, I don't notice a difference. So it they come out clean and fresh every time, no matter where I'm drying them. Now, if you're using a, an electric machine to dry with, what I recommend is wash them in their own load first and then put them in the dryer, but don't start the dryer because these will dry up really quick and you there's no need to run it for very long at all. You can either just run it on a short cycle or what I recommend to save even more electricity is wait until you wash your next load because this takes up so little room anyway, and then throw that in there together because by then these are already clean. You don't have to worry about that and then dry them all together. If you're interested in more on how I do laundry off grid, I'll go ahead and link to that last video I did on that down below so you can see all the details on how that works. So let me talk a little bit about the receptacles I use. In the main bathroom, what I used to use until I made the complete switch to the cloth was I had, I found this old teapot vintage teapot at a garage sale and i bought it specifically because it had a lid and i wanted something that looked kind of cute and old-fashioned for putting the cloth wipes in but when i made the switch to these i cut these bigger than the ones i was using before for obvious reasons and also because i'm using the cloth more i needed a bigger receptacle for my cloth so i bought myself a trash can that came with a lid it's got the pedal but i never actually really used the pedal i just lift and drop it in there and so the lid's going to also help keep it hidden from sight as well as keep any possible odors down three reasons why i bought this particular one one is because of the color i loved the bronze color but also because it had the lid and because it had the removable inside 
side so I didn't have to put a plastic bag I just take the handle pull it out I go and dump it directly into my washing machine and while I'm doing that I never notice any smell other than the little bit of essential oil that I forgot to mention that I like to add to that which is just a nice added feature you don't have to add essential oil and if you do be very careful which ones you use you don't want to use a hot oil like oregano or clove you can use citrus oils like orange I've actually used clove but very little bit so a little bit of clove and orange oil in this and that also will help cover up any smell and might just make you feel fresher anyway but just make sure you be very careful about how much of any of these you can use I've used thyme in the one I keep in the back bathroom here and again that one's not bad if you just just really just a, maybe a couple drops in a 16 ounce bottle is all you're going to need but anyway that's all I ever smell when I go to dump that out so no bad smells so no need to to put it in water and let it soak if you're concerned about that but then of course having a lid on it's going to help and then for the back bathroom I'm still using the crock pot that again I picked it up at a garage sale that I bought because I liked the way it looked. It, it matched perfectly with that more outdoorsy theme that I have for this back bathroom. And I bought it specifically for using to hold the cloth wipes. And then the old teapot that I used in the main bathroom, well, that now gets used in here for the baby's wipes when he's here. Now, let's talk about the types of cloth you can use. That's going to be entirely up to you and what's handy to you. What a lot of people like to do is to take old t-shirts that they can't wear anymore because they're so full of holes and cut those up. Now, those you have to cut. But the benefit of the t-shirts is not only is it free material, is that you don't have to hem t-shirt material at all. It's not going to fray on you. All you got to do is cut it. And then some people will just go down to whatever their local dollar store is and buy a big package of dishcloths, usually going for a darker color or a color that's going to be specified to go only in the bathroom for that specific purpose and not get mixed up with the dishcloths. And that's one way, because terry cloth is great. You know it's going to clean very well. And then for me, what I've done is these are both of these sets here. I've got two different colors in this plaid. These are both from old recycled sheets, flannel. I love flannel. It's my very favorite to use. And then again here, these are also from sheets that I'm recycling. These were actually new sheets that I bought for other purposes, but there was just a lot of excess material left. And so I've been using those for the wipes. And then what, the thing I like about flannel is you can get, a, it will fray, especially if it's a new flannel, like the, because these were new when I went to use them. I had more issues with them fraying for the first couple of washes but these ones did not because they were already used so you'll find that used flannel whether it be old flannel shirts or old flannel sheets is less likely to fray but you can still take the time and do the extra work and just go ahead and hem them if you want you can use pinking shears but they are very difficult to use on flannel and uh, i don't i find they don't make any difference when it comes to the flannel than just tearing it so what i do when i go to i don't cut them i always just tear them i measure out 10 inches and then i'll just rip it down and just have this big long 10 inch wide strip and then i'll take that strip and then rip it into 10 inch squares it's super easy the nice thing about tearing fabrics whenever you're talking cotton all cotton fabrics they will tear very easily in a straight line so you don't have to worry like with scissors you can be a little more tricky trying to get a perfectly straight line when you're ripping it'll always rip in a straight line and that's why i love ripping so there's three options you can use other types of fabric as well i do recommend sticking with natural fabrics such as cotton cotton especially is going to be the best when it comes to this let me go ahead and unfold one so you can see though i keep them folded in half that's how i like to use them is doubled over but as you can see it's a 10 inch square and then i just fold it in half and then i'll use it like that that's how it's done and it saves a lot of money i've never worried about a toilet paper supply just because we've always had plenty but now i don't have to worry about it at all we have so much toilet paper and it's taking us forever to use it because i don't use it anymore so as long as we have water and a plate and a way to wash it it's all good and if you're interested by the way we do have Though we are on city water, just like we're on public 
power. We also have off-grid power and off-grid water. So we do collect our own rainwater. And if we had to fall back on that to wash with, we actually have a pretty good rainwater supply. Mostly we save that for anything we're gonna consume, but we could fall back entirely on that if we really needed to. So make sure that no matter what choice you use, even if you're going with a bidet or something like that, you're still gonna to wanna to make sure you have some kind of backup water supply as well just like a backup power supply. And I will go ahead and link to the video I did on our rainwater setup. And as far as our solar power setup, we really need to do an updated video because we've added to it since. So one of these days we'll get around to that. But if you're interested to see what at least it looked like at one time, I'll go ahead and link to that older video down below too. So you can at least get an idea what we were doing, but we have since built on that and have a much bigger, bigger battery bank. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some ideas and feel free to share what you prefer to do. Do you prefer a bidet, a squirt bottle, or just to use your hands and wash up? I know in a lot of countries, that's what they do. Or to use cloth, and if you use cloth, what's your favorite kind to use? Do you like to use the terry cloth, the flannel, or the t-shirts? All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless. <music>